If you got this wrong, you almost certainly picked choice B. And no, no, you, you, this is totally preventable. You should have seen this coming, okay? Anytime the SAT tests percentages, you know that they're trying to trick you. Anytime they're t- testing percentages on a question 19 out of 22 in the hard module, you know they're messing with you. So any sort of intuition you have about this percentage question is wrong, or at least you should go into that process assuming it's wrong. We need formulas. We need a process that's not going to be susceptible to the kinds of traps that the SAT pulls every single time they test percentages in the hard module. So we have a formula. We use either one of the open formulas, right? So there are two versions of this depending on how we're talking about the percentages. So the the first one, the simple open formula, is going to work when we have situations where it's like a percent of something. And this other one is going to work when we have increases or decreases. Well, it's not hard to decide which formula to use. The question almost always makes it really, really clear, right? The result of increasing the quantity X by 400%. So you're increasing by a percentage. We're using this formula. So let's just review how it works. Well, we have an original value, right? We have a percentage, right? So that's the percent. It's going to be put as a decimal. And then we have some sort of new value. So we just need to make sure we don't confuse the original value with the new value. But they kind of make it really clear, right? The result of increasing the quantity X by 400% is 60, right? We start with X, then we increase it by 400%, and we end up with 60. So the original is X. We are increasing it by 400%. So it's a plus because it's an increase. And then the P is going to be 4. Or to make it kind of more symmetrical with percentages, I'm going to make it 4.00 because remember, we are moving the decimal place two spots and that's how we convert a percentage into a decimal. So you have to do that for this formula. And then the new value they give us is 60. So just like that, this question becomes basically just simple algebra, right? So we can add the two together. 1 plus 4 is, huh? five and then it's equal to 60 and then you divide by five and that's that x is 12. now notice it's close to b it's close to 15 right and that's exactly what they're hoping is that when you make these mistakes and you fall for these traps and percentage questions you're gonna get an answer that's close and that's because the, the percentages are not quite reversible and the, and the slight differences in the formula are going to produce similar results in many cases, but they're, they know that and they're hoping then you don't realize that you've made a mistake because it's still kind of like through an estimate kind of reasonable as an answer. And so, you know, you've got to make sure you're using the formula so that you don't fall into these traps. It's really, really obvious that they're going to do this. You If you've taken just one or two practice tests, you should have already come to this conclusion. So with percentages, no matter what, you need to use the formula. I recommend the open formula, either version, depending on the situation, because they're very reliable for the SAT. But if you have some other formula for the SAT, write it down on your scratch paper. Whatever you're using for percentages, just put it on the page. Do not trust yourself on percentage questions on the SAT. I cannot stress that enough. They are going to mess with you. We are question 19. We know they're gonna mess with us no matter what the topic of the question is, but percentages in particular are very, very dangerous. You can easily get this right just by taking it slow and using the formula, but if you go by your gut instinct, you're gonna get it wrong. Not acceptable as an error here.